Yes, good afternoon, uh, folks. We have with us today Mr. Neil McFarlane. He is the chairman of the CDBI, which is the Canadian Design Build Institute. Um, Neil is here to talk about, of course, the uh, design build methodology and talk about its merits as well. Um, thank you for joining us today, uh, Mr. McFarlane. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you, Alan. Thank you for having me today. I am glad that you were able to take up some time and, and join us, uh, Neil. Um, well, so what I'd like to do is begin by, of course, introducing uh, the organization for the audience. So could you speak to a bit about um, the association, its formation, its governance, uh, and the impact you've actually had in Canada over the last uh, decade or so? I'd be happy to, Alan. Uh, the Canadian Design Build Institute was officially formed in 1998 as a special committee of the Canadian Construction Association after uh, consultation with industry stakeholders across the country. Today, the CDBI is governed by a council consisting of a maximum of 15 members, and these members are comprised of a, a chair, a vice chair, an immediate past chair, uh, we have representation uh, with two owners, two design professionals, two general contractors, one trade contractor, one allied professional from the uh, legal, insurance, and bonding industries, and four members at large. So you can see from our membership on our council that we have a broad representation from the design and construction community. Our council meets quarterly and discusses issues related to design build in Canada. And we've also developed a practice manual that is comprised of a comprehensive set of guides on design build standard practices for those wishing to use design build as their project procurement method. And, and because it's a special committee of the Canadian Construction Association, the chair becomes a board member of the Canadian Construction Association and participates in the CCA meetings, thereby integrating the Canadian Design Build Institute with the construction industry at the national level. I see. So that's your relationship with the CCA then? That's correct, yes. Excellent, excellent. Um, so I, I wanted to accomplish one thing really in this uh, interview, Neil. Now, um, there are going to be a lot of, of course, listeners from the construction sector, but there are going to be many average Canadian listeners as well. Now, not everybody understands what design build is as a project delivery method. Could you kindly elaborate on this methodology, please? Certainly. A design build is a method of project delivery where the owner enters into a single contract with one entity to design and construct their project, as opposed to what we've, we've loosely termed in the past as the traditional method. Now, in the traditional method, the owner contracts first with a design firm to design the project, that's one contract, and then with a construction firm to build it, so that would be another contract. And in the traditional method then, the owner is responsible to coordinate any conflicts that might arise between the design and the construction aspects of the project. And sometimes this may result into additional costs for the owner. I see. When using design build, the owner develops a statement of requirements that defines the essential parameters of the project and allows the industry to respond with creative project solutions and the associated costs of their proposals. The owner will then select the proposal that best suits its needs, and once under contract with the owner, the design builder takes on the risk to coordinate the design and construction details and maintain the related schedule and costs. Hmm. That's very interesting. It seems like basically it is, it is a much more streamlined approach than the traditional uh, approach. Would that be a fair statement? That's correct, yes. Yeah. Okay, excellent. And, and, and it is a fairly new, well, I guess not so much now, but uh, generally it is a newer stream of, of, of practice, no? How long has it been since it's set in? Well, you know, design-build is, is actually a very old method of, uh, of contracting and having works done. You know, we go back to historical days and we look at the, the term the master builder. And, uh, you know, when, when historic churches were being built, a master builder would be the architect and they would also be in charge of the construction crews and, and see this uh, building through to its completion. And, and oftentimes, you know, if you look back on some of those very large projects that were built, the uh, the master builder could start off as as in in one project and then subsequently their children may finish it off as the master builder as the project was passed down from generation to generation sure 
That's, that's so definitely good design, terminology. And, and design build will find, uh, you know, it, it kind of fell out of favor uh, in the early part of the century when uh, it, it was discovered that, well, we could sit down with our with our designers and we could come up with a design that we liked and then we could get competitive pricing on it. Now, design build then does take the aspect of competitive pricing and it puts it together with, with uh, uh, competitive and creative designs, allowing the owner to make a selection from a number of different choices and, and select the best value for themselves. Excellent. So you've definitely pointed out some uh, some benefits of the methodology. Um, Neil, what I want to also try to accomplish uh, today is explain a bit about your, your industry. Now, of course, the construction industry of Canada being so vast um, and uh, you being uh, a, uh, a part of the CCA, the Canadian Construction Association, could you highlight exactly your industry to the audience? Who do you advocate for? Well, we have... Um Many, many people on, in our membership. Our membership is comprised of people representing all facets of design and construction, including uh, owners, design consultants, general and trade contractors, manufacturers and suppliers, and other associated professionals that provide services to the construction industry. All of our members have the ability to improve the, the design build community by sharing their experiences and promoting best practices for the betterment of the industry. So by listening to our members or responsing, responding to their questions, the CDBI is able to continually improve our standards of practice manuals and promote the use of design build where appropriate. Okay, well said, well said. Well, uh, Mr. McFarlane, let's get down to actually what makes sense, why design build uh, should be a preferred uh, choice. It's because of the economics of it. So could you highlight some of the major advantages and, and merits of this type of methodology? Well, of course, um, design build is only one method of delivering a project, but it is a method of fast-tracking a project in that it often provides a shorter overall project duration, meaning the owner gets to use their completed project quicker. However, in the process, the owner gives up some control over the design as long as the owner's stated requirements are met. So in terms of quality, the design build process can deliver the same level of quality as in any other project delivery method, provided that the expected and measurable quality requirements are stated up front by the owner. The, the Canadian Design Build Institute is ready and willing and able to assist in defining the level of details that owners should include in their statement of requirements. Okay, I see. And, and uh, really, for, for my knowledge and for the audience's knowledge, uh, the design methodology, has it been accepted equally in both the private and public sector, Neil, you think? Or, or has one stream uh, uh, preferred it more? Well, we don't keep any uh, specific records of who initiates design build projects. However, it would appear that in Canada and in the U.S. that the public sector owners are the strongest sector showing interest in design build and attending the design build conferences. I've had the, uh, the uh, um, pleasure of being able to attend many of our Canadian conferences, or most, most if not all of them, plus a number of the Design Build Institute of America conferences. And what we're really seeing at those conferences is that there are, there are a lot of public sector projects that are uh, initiated using the design build method. And the benefits of utilizing design build actually would be the same for both private and public sector. Um, really, several design proposals are available to choose from. The owner gets early price confirmation and quicker project delivery. Excellent. So it is actually the competitive price and the, and the speed uh, to, to completion or, or delivering the project. These are the two vital benefits. Correct. Yeah. The, the, the price is more based on value rather than actual dollar cost. Of course. So the owner gets to choose you know, the right balance between the, the quality of the design proposal received um, and, and compare that with the cost and help determine a sort of value that they can, they can justify. And, and then also there's the uh, compressed time frame that's uh, an advantage and can save money to the owner and to the contractor.
No, very well uh, put uh, together, Neil. I appreciate that uh, explanation. Uh, Mr. McFarlane, there's a certain subject that we've been working closely with many associations, provincial and national. It's to do with long-term government infrastructure spending and how it's really benefited the local regional economies, right? So, um, with respect to CDBI and design build, um, we'd like to basically understand how you guys have supported these projects um, from an industry perspective, and can you also also elaborate on any specific projects which will uh, implement the design build methodology when it comes to long-term infrastructure spending. Certainly. The uh, mandate of the Canadian Design Build Institute is to be rec the recognized voice of design build in Canada by developing and upholding good standards of practice, and these are developed in consultation with the industry. But as mentioned, the CDBI does not keep a record of who uses or who is planning on using design build as a project delivery method. Rather, we remain a resource to those who have chosen design build. Our tutorials and conferences assist project owners in making the decision about which project delivery method to use and, if design build is chosen, how to deliver it properly. Okay, fair enough. Well, here's an interesting uh, point of discussion, uh, Neil, and your, your insights will be appreciated. Now, yes, uh, I agree that design build uh, is, is definitely uh, popular uh, in Canada. However, its popularity overseas has been uh, more apparent for many years now, right? So do you, feel, uh, do you feel now that uh, there still needs to be a push to raise awareness um, publicly, um, of uh, this alternative uh, from a national perspective. What do you think? Well, you know, as Alan, as we've seen lately in the news, governments in Canada at all levels are discussing the use of design build and public-private uh, partnerships as a means to achieve better value for taxpayer dollars. So while not all projects are appropriate for the use of design build, many public projects are procured this way. And it is the CDBI's mission to educate the owners, both public and private sector, in the proper use of design build to preserve the advantages of design build. And, you know, another aspect of the CDBI's role is to educate the industry on the advantages of design build approach. And frankly, in the eyes of the public, once a project is built and in use, the method by which it was delivered is quickly forgotten. Our tutorials and conferences are two ways that we provide awareness to the industry of the benefits of design build. And our annual design build awards showcase uh, identifies and highlights projects that exemplify the method and have provi provided advantageous results for the project owners. And additionally, our website, www.cdbi.org, connects the viewer with a wealth of information about design build our publications, and advantages of membership. So on our website, we provide the opportunity to ask questions, both, both for the public and for the industry. So we, we, we have the opportunity to ask for questions uh, related to project procurement, and responses are provided by professionals experienced in the use of the design build. So really, we're not, we're not focusing our attention so much on the public as the CDBI. We really focus our attention towards the industry, and it's up to industry and owners to, um, to identify to the public and, and take those advantages and turn them over to the public and let them be aware of it. 100%, and, and I hope that um, uh, this medium with us uh, will actually go a long way in, in raising a bit more awareness uh, in, in, in the public about a methodology that really adds more value. I so appreciate that, uh, Neil. Uh, Mr. McFarland, I want to ask you a question that uh, I'm, I've been asking every association and council uh, that we are working with. Uh, at this point in time, uh, and moving into 2013 now, is there any major issue, whether positive or negative, that's keeping people like you and your members up at night? Well, you know, Alan, one of the, the we, we always take a look at our initiatives for the upcoming year and the things that we really think that we need to focus on, the big, pic, big picture issues. Uh, and one of our initiatives for the coming year is to encourage more owners to become involved in the CDBI by becoming active contributing members and attending our tutorials and conferences. As you might have picked up already from our discussions that owners are the source of all design build projects. They're the ones who make the decision to proceed and they're the ones who make the decision to use design build. And so by utilizing the best practices as developed by the CDBI, we can ensure some consistency in the industry. 
Uh, our members can benefit also from adding uh, working knowledge of design build to their repertoire of methods of project delivery. So they, you know, aside from choosing the traditional design bid build method or construction management, if they understand the use of design build, they can add that as another uh, method of project delivery that they can uh, share with their clients. So with these uh, different projects that are coming out, you know, and looking at how a uh, construction uh, design build contractor uh, can, can provide the proper service to their clients, they can take a look at the project, the specific requirements, and, and offer the proper procurement method. And I guess lastly, the other, another thing that we're really looking to do is start educating uh, students in colleges and universities in the use of design build as part of the possibly project management training in the uh, design and consulting uh, technologies as they're being taught in the colleges. Interesting. Oh, that's very uh, positive. Well, it, it all sounds positive uh, to me at least, uh, Neil. It seems that uh, you have the right set of initiatives uh, to move into 2013. Um, Neil, I'd like, uh, of course, to end on a bit of a soft note and try to pu uh, put, a, um, uh, put a face to the voice behind this interview. Um, could you uh, talk to the audience about your personal journey uh, to becoming the chairman here? Certainly. Well, uh, I've... I graduated from the uh, University of Alberta with a, a degree in civil engineering, and I, I spent all my entire career in you know, working in the design and construction industry, both in the public and private sector. And I've been involved with the CDBI since its inception in 1998, and I've attended nearly all of the annual conferences since then. I've spoken at a number of the conferences. I've participated in drafting and finalizing the Standards of Practice Manual, and I've delivered uh, components of the Fundamentals of Design Build tutorial that we put on uh, for the past five years. And after joining the CDBI Council in 2004, I first served on the Owners Committee and then headed up the Standards of Practice Committee before becoming Vice Chair in 2010 and, and Chair this past October. And I, I must say it's been a very rewarding journey for me. Uh, it's a it's a, a topic that I'm uh, keenly interested in, and it's not uh, the only project procurement method that I'm that I'm really interested in. But it's one that that I really feel is important for us to consider as an option when uh, selecting a, a method of project delivery. Sure. Well, uh, Mr. McFarlane, on behalf of the entire team uh, here and on behalf of the people tuning in, I'd like to thank you for taking out this time to educate not just uh, our team but uh, the audience on the merits of, uh, of Design Build. Uh, so thank you for your, for your time, uh, Neil. Thank you, Alan. It's been a pleasure to be here. Well, uh, there you have it, uh, folks. Uh, this is Mr. Neil McFarlane. He is the chairman of uh, the CDBI. If you'd like to learn a bit more about the organization, um, you can visit their website, which is www.cdbi.org. Uh, on behalf of the team here, thank you very much for tuning in, and we will see you soon.